project on the docket is going to be a circular top pedestal based kitchen table. And this is going to be a two part series and the first week is going to be about making the pedestal base. And this base is made up of construction grade pine that's just laminated together to create the size lumber we need to shape all the pieces. So this consists of three pieces which is the arms for the top, which is what will support the circular tabletop. Then the actual pedestal base, which is carved. And then the feet, which is two pieces that are lap jointed together with the hole for the base to sit in. And all these pieces fit together, but they will also be glued together. And since this is a project for a customer, the final piece is going to be painted. So you can take some liberties in the construction because you can fill in gaps and little holes with putty before you paint. The first part of this process for me is I make a paper template for all the parts that I'm going to cut out. Now, since the base of the customer sent me a picture of the base they wanted and it's not circular it's it's more square so you can't turn it on a lathe or anything like that so all of these pieces are going to be laminated and then shaped so I made this will support the tabletop the upper arms and that's just going to be straight pieces of lumber and then I drew out the base by making a center line folding it and copying each side like a mirror and then the, for the feet, I did the same thing. Where I got my length, drew my profile, folded it, and then traced. I also marked how much the base will sink into the feet so that I can make sure everything's the right height, including the width of the tabletop, before I start cutting all my pieces. So now that I have my three paper templates, I can cut all my lumber down to size and start laminating it together. First pieces I'm going to cut are going to be the pieces for the base and that's just because I don't have to rip the boards. I'm going to use them at the size they are. And I could just cut them on the, the radial arm saw and glue them together. So I'm going to be cutting those. This base is going to be 27 inches. I'm going to cut it a little long and I'm cutting that from 2 by 12s by 10s and I got two of those so I'm gonna I'm looking to end up with at least eight pieces to get my thickness so with my stack all cut I ended up with eight pieces and those were actually 2 by 12 by 12s and you're going to end up with a little extra and these are about 11 inches so in order to get 11 inches in height I had to use eight pieces only by like a quarter of an inch so I saw to use eight now since this can't be turned on a lathe and it wouldn't matter because I don't have a lathe big enough for it anyways um, once everything's glued together I'm going to have to employ various methods of carving to get this kind of squarish bulbous shape that goes on the bottom but to make life easier and not to have to remove so much material, I just squared off parts of my pattern. And before I glue together my stack, I'm going to go through and take all of these squares out. So I'll have my rough widths, and then I'll just have to shape this at the end. All of these cut out, I place them on their side and clamp them together, and I put the pattern back on center. And you can see that this bottom and this bottom won't touch the pattern, and neither will this one or this one. So I'm going to take these two to the radial arm saw and trim these off, just again so I have less waste to remove once everything's glued together.
the clamps off of it, and now it's ready to be shaped. I went and took my pattern and traced the outline of it on all sides of the pedestal. Now there's a couple ways that you can take off this material. If you're lucky and you have a really big bandsaw, you can just trace your pattern on all four sides and it will come out. I do not have that. Um, if you really don't have a lot of tools, since we took off most of the material before we glued it up, you can always go through with a chisel and kind of clean up these corners. A step up from that would be an abrasive pad on an angle grinder. That removes material very quickly. It's going to create a ton of dust, but it will be able to be shaped. For me, while these are all doable, they're going to take a little bit of time. So I actually have a carving bar for my chainsaw, and I'm going to try just trimming all these sides with that. I've never really done anything like that before, but I think if it works out, that is going to be the quickest, cleanest method. And I'll cut it roughly on the outside of my line and then go back in and clean it up. Um, the base is almost perfectly to size, so I'm not going to cut that. I'll probably clean that up with a plane. So before I do this, I'm going to attach it to this leftover piece of 2 by 12 so I have a nice, um, stable base, and then start up my chainsaw. underneath with the chainsaw. I'm actually really happy with how that worked. And now I'm going to start shaping it and getting, you know, rid of all the rough patches with um, the sanding disc on my angle grinder and maybe some hand planes for these flat surfaces. Now that I have that board off and I'm working on the bottom, I'm going to create these diagonals, kind of ridge diagonals going to my corners, which will give me my shape, and then go back in and start rounding this over. So after the first round of sanding with the angle grinder, I'm pretty happy with the shape. The only thing is this top block is a little bit thicker than um, in the photo I was provided. So in order to cut that down real fast, I'm just going to skim it with my chainsaw. So that cleaned up the sides pretty well, and not only did it take off the amount I wanted, but they're fairly flat now, which will make planing them much easier, and we're looking at just about a perfect square 7x7. Seven seven. So now, I'm going to go back and remake this curve from where the tip of the chainsaw left this bridge. do before I start using an orbital sander on this is just accentuate this curve on the bottom with the angle grinder. After that 
after that sanding with four grit sandpaper, it's pretty much done. I have my curve and all the sides seem to match. Well, there's a couple spots where um, I went a little too deep with the chainsaw and this is going to be painted so I could always go in with putty and fill. They're, they're not deep, just little like surface areas and you know this is just pot so if there's any cracks you can fill that with putty. Now for this, the last thing I have to do is cut a T on the top for the arms, but before I do that, I'm going to go, I sanded this with 40 grit paper, and I'll do 80 and then 120 before it'll be ready to paint. With the pedestal drying, I'm going to repeat that process to make the legs for the table base. So I'm going to cut... For this one, it doesn't have to be as wide, so I'm using two by sixes, and I'm because these are only going to be four inches high, and I'm just going to rip these down. Six sections will be used for each leg, and there's going to be two legs, so 12 pieces all together, and then they're going to be put together on edge, which will be more stable than gluing flat pieces. So I'm going to cut all the sections for these, and these are. 38 inches. So I'm going to cut 12 38 inch pieces. I ended up going with 5 per base because even though that's only 7 and 3 quarters, when it's going to be all glued together, doing 6 would be, it would just be too fat. So now that I have my two sections of five, since these are two by sixes, they're five and a half inches, and I need them at four. So I'm going to rip all these down to four inches. Now you can do this before you cut them to size to save time, but my shop is so small that it's easier to cut them to size and then rip them than to rip eight foot boards. So just like the pedestal before I glue all these together I'm going to use my pattern to mark roughly where the most excess could come off and I'm going to trim that on my bandsaw. You can use a jigsaw if you don't have a bandsaw. <laughs> Still done, I'm going to move my attentions to the two feet bases. And after glue up, you're usually left with some a little bit of undulation. And um, I'm going to clean that up first. I already did it on this one. You can see it's flat on the top and on the bottom. And to do that, um, you, if you have a planer, you can send it through a planer. I have a planer, but this takes five minutes per side, so I'm just going to hand plane both sides. Once that's done, I transferred my pattern onto the sides, as well as my marks on the top, and then onto the other side. Since we cut these before we glued them together, there's not a lot of material to remove at all, and I'm just going to use my angle grinder to shape this. And then I'll use the table saw to make these four grooves. these grooves I'm going to use my miter gauge and my table saw with my blade at a 45 degree angle. Now I'm actually cutting a little bit deeper than the groove because this part and the front are going to be rounded over so you're going to lose a little bit of depth of cut so I'm going a little bit deeper and I'm going to run these through and cut all four on one side on both pieces and then flip it and do the same on the other side. Now if you don't have a table saw, you can make these cuts with a circular saw set to 45 degrees.
did the angle grinder, I hit this with 40 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander, and then I used one of these to get inside the grooves. Before this is all said and done, I'll sand this to 80 grit and then 120, but right now I'm going to do the second one. And you can see that not a lot of material is removed, but you shape it quite nicely with that grinder to give it the curve that I was going for in all the sections. planning on finish sanding these until the whole piece is put together. It'll save time because you will have less to sand. So the next step to this process is making a big old fatty of a lap joint to connect these two pieces. So I had my marks left over from center and I found center of this and marked it and lined up those two marks on both sides. So this is four inches deep. So I'm going to end up cutting into the bottom of this one two inches to the end. And then I'm going to end up cutting to the top of this one two inches down to the end. And I'm going to mark that on here. So you're cutting the width of both of these two inches from the bottom on one and two inches from the top down on the other. So with those lined up, I'm going to run a mark along either side and then a mark along the bottom. So that when I lift those up, this is what's going to come out up to two inches. And then between these two marks down is what's going to come out on this one. So I marked both the pieces on both sides what is coming out. And then I laid it on my table saw and got my blade at the perfect height. I'm just going to use the miter gauge to send this through. It's going to take a while. It's a lot to remove. If you have a dado stack, you could put that in there and make it go faster, but I'm just going to use this and then clean up the excess with a chisel. With the pedestal uh, sitting in place, now it's going to be time to, before I glue everything together, I want to make the hole that the pedestal center will go into. Because, like in the beginning, the pedestal is going two inches into the base. So I marked two inches on all four sides of the pedestal face, and then I marked center on all corners. I'm going to use the marks left over from the lap joints, the center mark of this whole piece lengthwise, but also the center marks we marked for width. I'm going to line up the four marks on the pedestal with the four marks on the base. Now once my marks are hitting on all four spots, I'm going to take a pencil and just draw where I need to cut. Now with the two pieces apart, if that pedestal is going two inches into this base, there's two inches left over from when we cut out the two inch lap. So I can with my marks of where it belongs, I'm going to drill four holes in the corners and then I could take a jigsaw and cut this out, which will be much easier than gluing these two pieces together and trying to cut it out afterwards. So if you cut this out and put this together, then the pedestal will sit right on the bottom of this, should sit right on top of your second piece and then everything can be glued. this together 
I cleaned up the bottom a little bit and I tapered the corners and the bottom just in case my cut is a little uneven. It will And that's how that's going to fit in there. And this edge actually isn't too bad, but in the design anyway, there's a piece of round molding that will go around the bottom anyway. So if you have to make your hole a little bit bigger to make sure this fits, this edge will get covered up. Now before I glue all this together, the last thing I have to do for the base is cut out a cross on the top so that I can put the arms in. And they'll sit in here and the arms will be lapped just like the base. And so the last pieces I have to cut out to complete the base of the table are going to be the arms that sit on the top of the pedestal that support the tabletop. And those are going to be 44 inches long, so I'll take this 2x6 and cut out four sections that are 44 inches long because the width is going to be two and a half inches wide so I have to laminate two together and then trim a little bit once the glue has dried and the height is going to be three inches on these. support the tabletop out of the clamps because now they're dry and the next step I planed the bottom side of them flat and then the next step is going to be to rip this rounded edge off so we get our three inches height and then they only have to be two and a half inches wide and they're now three inches wide so I'm going to take a quarter inch off each side just to keep them symmetrical and then lastly just to give it a more finished look, the edges are going to be cut at a 45, and then these will be done. for the top cross members I marked center on both my pieces you can't see the mark on this one because obviously this one's sitting on top of it and then drew the line down on this side and up from there that way I could line that up with the center of here and on the same side there as well as line the center of this one up with the, my mark below then I can mark where my laps will be Then since this is three inches, we'll be coming up an inch and a half and cutting out this on this one. And then on the bottom, we'll be going down an inch and a half and cutting out that notch on this one. So the reason I attached the two cross members first with lap joints is it's easier to mark where you're going to cut into the pedestal. So I put them on top and then, you know, I centered them and drew marks. You can see where that's going to come off. Then I'm going to mark down the thickness of my piece, which is three inches, and make a line and all that's going to come out. So I don't have an excellent way to cut out this cross, mainly because this is too deep for my circular saw and this top's not perfectly flat and it's a little uneven for the table saw. The sides aren't perfectly square so it won't cut my marks square. So I think I'm going to try, I had success with the chainsaw on the side, so I think I'm going to try roughing out and getting the bulk of the material out with my chainsaw and then 
cleaning up the edges with a chisel and see how that works. side which isn't a huge deal because like I said this will be painted and I can fill that in. But other than that it seemed to cut this pretty well. And then this is a really nice fit because it's level and this is a little proud of the pedestal which means that the table will sit on these and not the pedestal. So now I can start filling some of these holes, patching everything, and this will be ready for paint.